Are you intimidated by After Effects? I was too. Are you wanting to learn but it feels like just too much? Don't worry, it's a lot easier than you may think. This will be an After Effects crash course in under 15 minutes. What's up everybody? It is Desiree LeCap, aka LeCapture, back on your screen with another dope video. You already know. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through the basics of After Effects, then starting with the most simple animation, keyframes. Keyframes can add life to your videos, photo stills, audio, color grading. It can really be applied to anything. I use it a lot in my videos like here and here. When you know the basics of keyframe, you'll understand how animation works. So after you watch this video, you'll leave with some basic animation knowledge. A lot of people don't really know I have these tools under my belts. This was way back when I first started. I wanted to try anything and everything out, as you can see in this video here. Very extra, but that was the time where I tried so many different types of effects and now that I look back at it, it just doesn't really work. But I'm glad that I did it because now I have these tools under my belt and I'm here to pass on the knowledge to you. Before we get into the keyframes, let's start with the basic steps first. So when you open up After Effects, you have your main window and then you have the project window that opens up together. So let's just go ahead and create a new project and it'll open up to your project file here. So if you're working on a big project, you wanna make sure that you save your project file because it's not gonna save until you go into file and you save as. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go to save as up on file. We're gonna save it just for the purposes on my thingy and we'll go After Effects tutorial save. Okay, so once you save that, you have your new composition or you have new composition from footage where you import your footage when you click on it, and you import it right away. But for this case, we're gonna go ahead and create the new composition. And you always wanna name your compositions, especially down the road, you're gonna be working with a ton of different composition, nested layers. And you wanna just essentially keep your project file as organized as you can. Preset, custom define 1920 by 1080, 23.976. And then for duration, we're just gonna make it five seconds, whatever the default is. Awesome, and we'll just hit okay. And on the left side over here, you have your project panel and then you have your effects controls. It is the default for After Effects when you open it up, but you could always change it by going up to Windows, Workspace, and then changing it to whatever one you want. There's essential graphics, animation, library, learn, etc. Okay, so yeah, so now we have project. This is where all your imported footage will be, all your compositions, your nested sequences. So I always like to create new folders, especially if I'm working on a big project, just to stay organized. On the top over here, you have your toolbar. And then down here, you have your timeline over here where it says keyframes it will have different compositions so that's where those will be lined up on the right side over here you have a line audio preview effects and presets so all of those and again you could add or take away some so i'll delete panel i can close that out and then when you're working with rotoscope which is something i'll talk about down the road you're going to want to double click your layer that you work with and then sometimes it'll pop in in this tab above here. So now that you know the interface of After Effects, let's get into keyframes. So the idea of keyframes is really important once you start getting into it because then you realize that you could use it for literally almost everything. I use it for color grading, for audio, for position, scale, rotation, and honestly anything I could think of in the post-production process. So the key to animating is actually keyframes. So once you understand keyframes, you'll know more about how to animate. So let's talk about what it is. So it usually represents a diamond in editing softwares like Premiere, DaVinci, After Effects, etc. but it could look like a circle in other editing softwares. Whenever we set that diamond, we're basically saying to the computer that that is a keyframe that I'm starting my first animation on 
then I create my end keyframe here, zero scale. So I went from 100 scale to zero scale. Then whatever happens in between is the motion that we just created here from point A to point B. You can always add keyframes in between, but just for starting out, we're going to begin with two points. All right, so we're going to create a simple animation here. First, I'm going to go ahead and select the shape tool and select the ellipse tool. We'll fill it with the blue and we'll create a circle. If you want a perfect circle, hold shift as you drag it to create your circle. And before you do anything else, especially if you scale your animation, you can see that your anchor point is not in the center of your circle. It's in the center of the composition, but not in the center of your circle. So you'll see what happens when I hit S for scale and I scale it down, it'll scale not centered at all, of the circle at least. So what you wanna do is go up on your toolbar, hit pan behind, which is your anchor point, or the Y for a hotkey, and then you wanna drag it into the center of your circle. Now, when you scale down, it's in the center rather than scaling and positioning to where the anchor point is at. So just a tip. All right, so now that we have that squared away, we're gonna add the keyframes. So I'm gonna go up a couple seconds, about three seconds, and then I'm gonna create the keyframe by hitting the stopwatch here, and I'm gonna go back to the beginning. I'm gonna change the value from 100 to zero. That way my animation is scaling from 0% to 100%. So I'll play it back. There it is. And you could play around with the distance of your keyframes. That was a little slow for me. It was a total of three seconds. So I'm gonna push it down to about two seconds here. I'm gonna play it back. You could even go half a second, depending on how fast you want the animation to go. I'm gonna talk about what this animation is. This is a linear animation, meaning it is just a straight line. So I'm gonna create a Bezier animation. What Bezier means is curves. You're basically adding curves to the actual animation path inside After Effects. Okay, so we have our linear animation here. I'm gonna go ahead and create a different shape. And we're gonna make the Bezier orange. We'll just create that right here. We'll position it here. And then making sure our anchor point is in the center of that orange circle. So let's go ahead and drag that there. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same distance, about 19 frames, about one second. Hit S for scale, create a stopwatch there, go to the beginning, and then change my value from 100 to 0. So right now they're both linear because meaning it's a straight line. To basically get a little more advanced with your animation, we're gonna create that Bezier. So we're gonna highlight both keyframes on the orange layer, right click, keyframe assistance, and easy ease. So now you get these, these different icons that aren't a diamond, meaning now it's that Bezier curve. If you could tell the difference, it is a lot more smooth in transition because we have that curve in the animation with the orange. So I'll just play the orange one. It has a little bit of ease to the landing, but the blue one has that just hard stop. For some of you, that may be good enough, but if you wanna fine tune it, let's get into the graph editor. Okay, so. To show you the difference between linear and bezier, when you hit your graph editor icon right here in After Effects, you want to make sure you click on the parameter to view it. So this is our linear scale, as you can see it shows right here, and we are editing on the speed graph. So right here is linear, you click on the bezier, and this one is curved. So we're gonna work with the Bezier to fine tune it a little more. So let's turn off our linear layer and just focus on our Bezier curve. This basically shows the speed graph editor. You could see the speed over time and it shows you that right here. And right here, these points right here represent the keyframes. Click on it and you'll notice it has a handle when it's a Bezier keyframe. So you wanna move it this way you'll see that it eases in slowly and then eases out quickly. 
you do the opposite pull this side to the left now it eases in fast and eases out slow so you heard me say easing in and easing out so both of those are pretty important ease in is quick in the beginning and slows down at the end so this is your easy in here i'll drag my curve to the left and it's quick in the beginning and then it slows down at the end and then your easy out is it starts slow, which I'll drag the left side over up here. So it starts slow and ends quick. It basically snaps in. For a good in between, I like to just drag it into the middle here. You could tell that the speed happens in the middle of the transition. So basically when you think of it, the top of the hill is when the speed increases. Whether you're moving it to the right side, whether you're moving it to the left side, or if it's just kind of this simple ease right here. Usually you need to add other keyframes to set different speeds, but that's what makes the graph editor cool to work with. Let's take it a step further. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete my keyframes. We're actually gonna go ahead and scale it up and center it, hit the align, center it here. Now we're gonna mess with position animation. So for position, it is pretty much the same. Keyframes work all the same way. Where you position it at point A, that's where the animation is gonna start. Where you position it point B for your second keyframe, that's where your animation ends. So I'm gonna drag this to my left side here. I'm gonna hit the position keyframe at the beginning of my timeline. I'm gonna drag it about two seconds here and I'm gonna create a keyframe by dragging it to my right side. You can see it's creating that line here that indicates the animation. So as you can see, it's going across like so. And this is a linear animation. So let's make it a Bezier animation by highlighting both right click, keyframe assistant and easy ease. We're gonna make it an easy in, meaning that it is quick in the beginning and slow at the end. So quick in the beginning, we're gonna drag our right keyframe handle to our left, creating that hill, which indicates that it's faster and it'll ease in. So to take it a step further with any animation, it's great to add motion blur. So to add motion blur, we're gonna go ahead and toggle this down here and it'll be this icon. And if you don't see it, Go to the bottom, toggle switches and modes, and you should be able to see that clearly. So let's go ahead and add that in there, and you'll be able to see that now it adds that motion. Now the blur is there, as you can see. So that's with it. So as I pause it, you can see the blur, and I take it out, and it's pretty solid. So I like to add the motion blur because it adds that extra element with animation. So yeah, basically that is it. And if you wanna take it a step further, Let's go ahead and delete all my keyframes. I'm gonna create three keyframes here for you guys, just for position. So we'll go up here, create our first point. We'll go about one second, and then now we'll create a V and put it in the center right here. Again, you can see that it's creating the animation. And then now we're gonna move our playhead about one second more and then put it at the other corner. So you can see it's created that motion with my three keyframes here. So let's go ahead and play that back. It's kind of like a ping pong ball. So that's your linear. Now let's create the Bezier. And without messing with the graph editor yet, this is what it looks like. You could see it kind of pauses instead of immediately bounces. Now with three keyframes, you'll have these curves here. And it's basically the same thing when you have two keyframes. So for the first part here, which is this line here, that's what it's indicating. I wanna go ahead and ease out, meaning it's slow in the beginning, fast in the end. And then for my second animation, I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna ease in, which is Quick in the beginning, slow in the end. So this is my graph editor here. Let's see what it looks like. Play around with it, see what it does when it's the opposites, like so.
So this is your After Effects crash course on keyframes. I hope you took away what simple animations can do for your videos by using keyframes. I plan on doing more After Effects crash tutorials on masking, mask transitions, rotoscoping, title texts, whatever you want, name it, comment down below. I hope you guys enjoy this video and use keyframes for your next videos. My name is Desiree LeCap, aka LeCapture. Follow me on all my social medias linked down below. Like, comment, share, and subscribe because I will be posting a ton of filmmaking tips and tricks. And if you have a topic that you want to learn about, I'll do my best to pass on the knowledge to you. All right, y'all, till next time, I'll see y'all at the next video. Peace.